Way to look on the bright side. <laughs> okay, so because I know you guys are, um, you know, a little bit burnt out, it's very, where there are no examples, and it's very, very easy stuff today. So I have to keep going so we can get everything done according to schedule, but it should be a breeze. <clears throat> so time d is the cosine function, so we're just going to talk about graphing the cosine function. And you can go ahead and get your stat box. So if we take a look at the unit circle, we can see that when x equals 0 for cosine, y equals 1, when we plug in pi over 2, it's at 0, pi is at negative 1, 3 pi over 2 is at 0, and 2 pi is at 1. So those numbers come directly from your unit circle. <coughs> so when we graph it, instead of like sine starts at 0, 0, we actually start up at 1, or our maximum, and then we go down, and then we go back up. And so this one is showing some of the negative um, negative values as well, but it's following that same pattern. The period is still 2 pi. The amplitude of our basic function is still 1, and the principal axis is still at y equals 0. So all of these things are the same as sine when we've got y equals cosine x. And I do believe that basic stuff is on the back of your unit circle as basic stuff is on is on the back of this as well. You guys can always look at that. Alright, so the thing is, it's actually just a horizontal translation of the sine curve. If you move the sine curve to the left, pi over 2 units, you get the cosine curve. So this is taken directly out of your textbook. I don't know that you need to draw this, but um, the dotted line is our sine curve. Y equals sine of x, so starting at 0, 0, up, back down, and back up. And then again, like as you can see, we just shift it over. So we're starting at the top and then going down and back up to the top <coughs> for the cosine curve. This should all be like refresher, right? Because we've done these graph these last year. So draw a quick sketch of one period, so to two pi of the cosine function and the sine function to show the difference. And so I think I want to draw them separately. You could draw them on the same if you want. I'm going to draw mine separately, though. Which one do you want to graph first? Cosine first? Okay. So then, let's mark these one and negative one. So the thing about cosine is it starts at the maximum, and then it goes through zero, and it's the minimum at pi, back through zero, and then back to the maximum at two pi. So that's like the big difference is it starts at the maximum instead of starting at zero. Also, do you guys at all, does it look like a C to you at all? Turn your head. Can you get, do you see a C to your C? Or does it look like I don't understand. So, like, that's how I remember it. I swear to you. Like, I just, that's how I remember it is that cosine is going to look like a C. And sine is going to look kind of like an S because 
We'll start at zero, zero, maximum through zero, minimum back up. Yeah, it's not like a good S, it's like all reflected, but that's like how I personally remember. I, I, I don't know which one I usually start with. Probably sine these days because we start with it. And then I'm, if I can draw a sine, then I can remember how the cosine goes and like how it's different. So that's what works for me, which is why I wanted to share that. So very, very similar stuff. All right, so then all of this stuff is the same as it is with sine. So A in front multiplying A is going to be a vertical stretch. It'll change the amplitude. So it'll change your maximum and your minimum, right? <coughs> B being multiplied inside that function is a horizontal stretch. It'll be related to the period. It is still that the period still equals 2 pi over b. Like that's still the same as well. Just like sine. C is that horizontal shift. So shifting it left and right. Remember it's kind of like the opposite of what you see inside there when it's inside the parentheses. And then D is that vertical shift moving that principal axis up or down. So that's that middle value. So the principal axis along with the amplitude will change your maximums and your minimums. Because you'll have to shift your axis and then you have to, you know, calculate your amplitude for your maximum and your minimum on either side of that. So this is it for the note. You guys okay? Am I asking too much? I do have some high standards for you. It's true. Okay. <laughs> What's it? What did I put it on? I don't understand what's funny. Okay, thanks, Sam. <laughs>